hi everybody. I am Tara Jasper and I make Sip Song Spirits gins. And um, I started looking into starting a distillery in 2016 is when I first got uh, some Bye. documents from the state and like it actually started happening. Um, uh, and before that, I just have always loved food and beverage. Um, that's been a passion my whole entire life. And, um, and it really came from my, my grandfather's side. My, my mom's father was Italian and he had a bar actually in South San Francisco, which oh, is cool. where my mom is gone now. And I don't know the name of the bar. So mm -hmm. we don't have a big family. It's really sad, but I hope to someday learn out the name of his bar. Um, my dad, yeah, that would be so cool to find that out. He cured his own meats. He was he was very into cocktailing, and so it's kind of full circle. Sorry, my dog just got here and she. Oh, it's okay. Um, very full circle that I would be um, into spirits, and um, but anyways, my so everything was always from scratch. My entire upbringing, and um, I guess the gin it came from. I was making liqueurs. I was learning about distilling the fruit to make liqueurs. So I had uh, started distilling fruits and it was beautiful. I was so inspired by how delicious things were, were coming out. Yes, I was yeah. just so stoked and knew that that it was what I wanted to keep doing. So I bought as many distilling books as I could get and learning all about it. And at the same time, I was still, um, you know, very active in my kitchen, but my kids got really picky. So they weren't into all the creative cooking that I like to do. Um, yeah. But I did a dinner party for 20 people, an auction dinner party that um, I didn't know these people. They paid a lot of money to, for this dinner cooked by me. And so I spent a week sourcing ingredients and the dinner was so beautiful, but it was like a full week of labor for me. Yeah. And the moment of bliss it passed, like everyone was loving it. And then it was over. And I really right. realized that what I was excited about with spirits was to take my love of blending flavors and bottle it and then be able to share it with a lot more people um, and have it. And, and have it last a little bit longer. Have it last, have it even outlive me. I tasted a 30 right. year old gin and it was still good. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, this is exciting. Yeah. I don't know how long my spring gin definitely changed through the year. Um, I just opened my very last bottle of it from the tasting room. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more at the tasting room, but, um, but I'll get you a little sample of this awesome. bottle so you can try it. Um, but it definitely changed from uh, the first few months because I used vapor distillation. I think mm. maybe it, um, I don't know. I'm still learning. Honestly, this is yeah. a journey of learning for me. And um, I'm just really passionate about blending flavors, like I said. So that's why the seasonal gins are so fun for me. I'm right now working on a summer gin. Mm. Uh, so that sounds interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what does Sip Song, what does Sip Song mean? I, does it have a meaning? It does. Yeah. Okay. I had a different name at first. I got a cease and desist letter. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't put any labels on, but I did design a label and I, um, I guess I'd probably, I don't know if I'd started in social media. I'm not sure how they found out about my name, but it, there was a winery that had a portion of the same name. Oh, okay. The same word. It wasn't, but, um, that was so enough. I thought I was going to be able to fight it. I was like, yeah, that's not a big deal. And I went to a conference and I met a trademark lawyer and she spent 10 minutes with me. I was so grateful um, because she's, she took one look at the letter and recognized the name of the lawyer. She's like, oh, that, that's the best trademark lawyer in the country. Yeah. You're going to spend a lot of money and you're probably going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like, some things are, you know, some fights aren't always worth it. No. So, um, and honestly, that name probably wasn't as good as I thought it was. Um, at, at that time I was really into the liqueur idea and I was really, Oh, sorry. My phone. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me just turn that off. Um, I thought that I was going to be using wild fruits. Like I was thinking mm. about very, very small, very, very craft. Right. Um, you know, my first two liqueurs were made with, uh, foraged wild fruits. So blackberries mm. and wild plums. Um, but Yum. 
So Sounds it's delicious. Not not scalable at all. No, not, probably not. But I wasn't. I mean, I still am not necessarily totally interested in being everywhere. Mass um, produced, right? Yeah, I really love that my product is is Sonoma County. Um, a couple spots in Napa, a couple spots in San Francisco, but it's it's for real people people who really care about gin. So that's kind of the spots that I've ended up in are for places where people really care about gin specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, Bayota in San Francisco, um, Whitechapel, of course. Um, but, uh, anyway, I forgot what we were talking about. I was oh. asking what sip song means. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So yes. So <laughs> I went to, um, Hawaii with my family right after that losing the name. I had probably been a couple of months and I really, I didn't want to just choose any old name and I really wanted the name to mean something so the whole thing just went on hold until a name came to me and so we were going to Hawaii for 10 days with the kids and I brought my ukulele thinking that I would make time every day and I would play and I would be inspired and yeah um, but after 10 days I had and I had that lawyer that I met at that conference and I was emailing her names and I, uh -huh. Oh, force of nature. I was looking at a waterfall. I was like, that's it. And she's like, no, that's an energy drink. Okay. I mean, I felt like everything I came up with was shot down and sure. we were leaving. We we're at the airport waiting to load the plane. And I just sat down on the floor and, and was just playing these chords. Someone had taught me on the beach, these chords. And, and he said, I would know the name of the song. But I didn't know the song, or he said I would know the song, but I didn't know the song at that point. I was just playing the chords, and all of a sudden, I started singing the song. Oh. Oh, there's that song. And at that same time, I was thinking to myself, like, this, I want people to sip this. This is not like a chugging beverage. This is a, you make one, you sip it. Through right. It. It's not about drinking a lot. To me, it's about drinking really good quality. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, then I was like, sip, song. I was sure it was taken, but I just love, I loved the way it sounded. And then I Googled it and it meant, um, it's a baby first name for a baby girl in China. Oh, I've never met anyone with that name, but, um, when you, when you look it up, that's like one of the first things that comes up. It's also a town in China, oh, but um, how interesting. Baby, baby girl first name. And I don't know if you, you're a bit younger than me, but when I was a kid, um, I remember hearing stories about baby girls in China being left out in the woods to die because the parents wanted boys. Right. I yeah. That when I was a little girl and just being like, what in the, what? Like, what? Why? What? Like, you know, I was just, um, I don't know. I just really have always not understood the inequities for men and women. And, and I've always seen like a lot of value in um, what, the, what the female brain brings to any problem solving, any, anything. So, um, uh, so anyways, long story short, that really felt like the right name because of, of that, um, that tie in. Uh, mm -hmm. the value of the female and and then the meaning of that name means intuition inner wisdom and generosity mm, nice so for me like starting a business is a way that I can give back to the community and right. um, not very many I don't know how many people know but my husband has a business and and I'm always bugging him to donate and sponsor things and and he he does sometimes, but he also is like, I need to give my money back to my employees. Like my number one thing is to pay them as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I can't always get him to do all the nonprofit stuff I want him to do. And my previous, uh, life before starting Sip Song, I was a philanthropist. So I was, um, leading fundraisers, auctioneering, um, behind the scenes for different auctions and raising money for healthcare and education. And oh, right. nice. I think yeah, you said. Uh, I recall seeing you did some philanthropy work for a hospital that's up in the Hillsburg area. I think you partnered with um, a chef from Spencer Sisters and Dusky. I think is that right? Yes, yes I was um, so lucky to be at the first meetings when we created. It was Pat Callahan and uh, Dominica Catelli. And myself, Pat was at that time the executive director for the Healthcare Foundation of Northern Sonoma County. And she just had this idea. She's like, we have so many badass female winemakers and chefs. 
let's mm-hmm. just do a dinner where they show off their stuff. So it was Dusky Estes and um, Liza Hinman and Domenica. Um, then we had Jennifer Higgins as winemaker, as well as, um, I'm trying to remember, oh, of course, Shelly Raffinelli. Um, so that Yeah, first it looked dinner, amazing. And everyone that I've ever been to, but that first dinner just knocked everybody's socks off. And I was sitting nice. across from a woman that had written many cookbooks and she was like, she took a bite of uh, the duck. I'm trying to remember who prepared the duck, but, and it was paired with um, Shelly's Zinn from Raffinelli. And she was like, I haven't had duck this good for 40 years and since I was in Paris 40 years ago. And like, so <laughs> anyway, wow. it was just, you know, so that dinner yeah. was renewed and been so cool. And it was really special for me the first time that they asked me to make the opening cocktail. So I've done that two years in a row, done the opening. Oh, really nice. Really because nice. it's sort of like, I was, I don't, I think it must've been Pat's idea. But I, I don't remember who's, who came up with the original idea, but I definitely helped shape the first one. And uh, Yeah, it seems I, uh, I re- it just came kind of across my social media feed at the end of last year or maybe the very, very beginning of this year. But it looked like a really fun, uh, fun experience, especially to be around all of those amazing creators and um, female creators, which is always great. Added bonus. Yeah, no, that's neat. It's really, really great because, um, well, I mean, there's just, there's just still a long way to go, um, for females and in all professions that Mm -hmm. are, um, STEM related, especially. And, um, what's really exciting for me is to see what discoveries have not yet happened because for thousands of years, um, the female brain has been, I don't want to say untapped, but mm-hmm. somewhat untapped. So and right. underutilized. Completely. Underutilized. That's a great word. Um, so I, I'm part of this female entrepreneurship group that is just so fun because I get to see these ideas come to life. And yeah, uh, yeah the woman who started the it's a female libido enhancing drug. I'm forgetting what it's called now, but <laughs> She she was one of the creators of Viagra. So she oh. and then she sold out of her portion of that and then started this and had trouble getting FDA approval and Nightline ended up at her door and did a did a show about it and um so she is now a multi-billionaire and what she's done is she started an incubator for females in STEM. Hmm. And then That's get great. through the process and it's really cool to see what's coming out of her incubator but yeah, anyway, wow. Going way off topic. It's okay. Um, that's what it's kind of about, right? Yeah. So, so Sip Song initially started with Indira. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So I was trying to make a gin because for me, um, also I stopped. I can drink wine, but I get some skin rashes, so I can't mm-hmm. drink it every day or every, you know, uh, not as much as I'd like. I have three kids. I need to have a drink at the end yeah. of the day. <laughs> So my acupuncturist told me no more um, wine for a while. Try mm-hmm. just to do clear spirits for a few months. And um, vodka just, it was, it, it's all right, but I preferred gin and I preferred, uh, you know, lower sugar, even just gin and soda, mm-hmm. um, like gin and like the fever light tonic is my favorite. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to make a gin that, that was as good as my favorite gin at that time because I was spending 47. I like monkey 47. And, um, and, and so I just started tinkering, um, and also visiting distilleries. And, um, at that time I was distilling individual botanicals, just trying to find all the different kinds of juniper I could get my hands on and all the Mm -hmm all kinds of botanicals that I saw that were in other gins and then also tinkering with them and, you know, taking my coriander and toasting it. Um, and then trying that, trying to infusion and then just, uh, filtering that out or crushing. And, you know, I, so I was experimenting and then yeah. I really went to England that summer and I hadn't done any blending yet. I just was individually distilling at that point, trying different bases. Um, and, we went to, we were in Stratford upon Avon with my husband's family. And um, we're like, I'm meeting all the cousins and they're just, they were blown away that I was working on a gin. There's yeah. 
they're like they're real really alcoholics a few of them and um so i mean nothing wrong with it but like that like i mean to each I, their own <laughs> i bought enough booze i thought for the entire wedding week right and right he, and his cousin got there and two days it was it's a gone. party it's a wedding it's that a was celebration. A i was like wow <laughs> i don't know how he drank that much but anyways um so he he especially his date my husband's cousin was really excited about this project and i love i i do um send him things for to oh try. nice that's um, awesome samples and um but he uh told me about this distillery called cotswolds distillery and that was just a 40 minute drive from where we were. And one day that the family went and did something and I took one of the cars and found this distillery, which was in the middle of nowhere on like a one lane road in the middle of the cops. Probably a little terrifying to get there. <laughs> yes, yes. And my phone wouldn't work. So to get back to Stratford, I had to remember how right. I got there. Um, so that was- oh boy. Fun. But it was awesome. And then I got there and they're like, oh, you don't have an appointment. So you can't cut, you can't do the tour. Oh. And I was so disappointed. And so then luckily someone didn't show up and I just stayed and waited and I got to do the two hour tour. Oh, nice. It was amazing. Actually, their single malt they're making is really ridiculous. Their gin is really, really good too. Um, and I learned so much from, um, from that experience. Um, mm -hmm. But then every distillery I learn, I go to that has a tour that really goes into depth about what they're doing. I love it. Um, cause I'm, I would love to age someday. I still have a lot to learn about aging. Um, I've read a number of books, but I, you know, I don't want to do something until I'm sure that I can do right, it. Right. Well. You can execute on it well. Yeah. So, Which that's, I get. Yeah. so then you did a spring one. And so then it obviously had like a different flavor kind of approach to it. And is it, yeah. So when I first started thinking about even making a gin, the spring had already started to form in my mind. Um, and, um, I, you know, I have like a flavor memory I'd probably the best. I have a terrible memory, but I have a really good flavor memory, which is weird. Like I can remember things that I ate. I think I that's would. awesome. That's a lot of fun. It's a great <laughs> way to like recall memories is through flavor, you know, I think yeah. that's a fun, a fun piece to have. Well, that's why I think I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in my life at this point. Nice. Like, yes, I finally figured out what to do with this ridiculous um, palette. And this, as you know, I was talking to somebody on a Zoom call on Saturday. It was so great. It was a bunch of industry folks. It was so awesome, actually. And um, one of them said that she was diagnosed with a super palette. And I'm like, that's what it felt like for so long. It felt like it was actually not um, a benefit. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was like a diagnosis because, because it, my husband doesn't get it. Like if he, um, you know, and when I had the twins, I had everybody trying to help and cook and I had to eat a ton to nurse twins and yeah. I just had to like let it go and just eat whatever. And cause I could, didn't have time to cook or prepare anything. And, um, I took to eating a lot of, uh, cracked cupcakes. I would eat like four cup cupcakes a day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's cupcakes. okay. And they were good. And oh. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, what what was I? Oh, the spring. So the spring, yes, yeah, started forming in my mind. And basically, it's my favorite time of year in Sonoma County. Um, it's beautiful time of year here. So amazing, and I just wanted to capture that moment and get it into a bottle. And and I I don't know. I didn't know if it would be something that anybody would want to drink, but I um, started. I spent like a few weeks before I actually made that one batch doing lab distillations and mm. found that the vapor distillation of the fresh botanicals was definitely the best way um, and making a slightly smaller batch um, to not overcook them, you know, is, is important. And um, so there's, there's fava flowers in there. There's pea tendrils, there's um, iris roots, there's um, little Doug fir tip. Um, wow. There's cherry blossoms. Um, it feels so, so vastly different than like a traditional gin. And so how fun to like play with that flavor offering. Cause it really, I mean, I'm sure it, it tastes, I can only imagine like what those pieces of flavor bring to a cocktail. Um, so beautiful. And yeah. Then, how special. 
Yeah, one of the cocktails that I was hoping it would work well in um, when I was making it, uh, because Indira doesn't, in my opinion, taste that great in the last word. I think the chartreuse is like too contrasting with the... Um, I'm actually not familiar with that cocktail. Oh, so the, it's funny. The, the Zoom call that I had with the industry on Saturday was all about chartreuse. And it was okay. so fun. Um, I learned so much about chartreuse. And um, so it's green chartreuse, equal parts. So it's very easy. Green chartreuse, Luxardo, cherry, liqueur, mm -hmm. lime juice, and gin. All and, equal parts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And you just shake that up. And so it's, it's fabulous with spring. And so yeah, that, that sounds nice. Yeah, really, really good. And also, if you were to take out the cherry liqueur and make a pineapple syrup, mm. just, I, whenever I um, cut up a pineapple, I take the center of the pineapple and I stick it in the simple syrup to simmer for a little while. It's delicious. Perfect. With the chartreuse and with the spring gin. Yum. Yum. <laughs> yeah, I think what's great, so I'm not a huge gin fan. I was when I was younger. My mom was a big gin and tonic drinker. She um, tanked rain and tonics with two limes. That was her like go-to cocktail. It's also my grandmother's go-to cocktail. Um, and so I originally started drinking those and then found my way to, to dark spirits. Um, but I would have to say that Sip Song is, is, while it is gin, it does not have kind of that like it's not pungent it's not medicinal it's it's, forward yeah it's a really nicely done um soft gin that is really enjoyable I was I remember the first time I tasted it now a couple of years ago and I was like yeah I'm I will happily drink more of that so oh, I think it's a really nice nicely done um nicely done spirit Thank you. That's so nice. Yeah, I, I actually am not a huge London Dry fan either. And mm -hmm. I think it's just a little bit too hard hitting on the juniper. So I definitely I tend to try to round out the juniper with other interests, which is yeah. why I didn't know that gin could be that. So when I read that, it was like, oh my God, like this is so yeah. exciting. There's so much more gin can be. And so I feel like I'm just at the tip of the iceberg for what I hopefully create. Um, well, and I think it's so much fun that you're, you are playing with the recipe, so to speak, you know, that you are building upon it and that, you know, you've done spring and now you're working on a summer and, and just, there's so many opportunities and possibilities. I think that's also what makes it fun and exciting. Yes. Yeah. I feel so lucky that my little, I have this little gin club and um, that's what allows me to do this. They basically, I, I've, that's how I sold out of the spring. Um, uh -huh. They, they, uh, they trust me. They're basically promising to buy what seasonal thing I make. Fun. <laughs> that's I'm great. Like, oh, I hope you guys like it. No, I, and um, yeah, it's really, really wonderful. Um, I feel very honored to be to be getting to do this, honestly, I feel like I'm getting to live my dream. And, um, and it's been, it's been really hard with this whole COVID thing, um, to see so many restaurants and bars. I mean, I'm going to cry. Um, I've been trying to figure out first thing I've figured out was like, Oh my gosh, we have to make hand sanitizer. We have to make as yeah. much hand sanitizer as we can and price it at our, as reasonably it's basically at our cost because the costs keep changing we we priced it slightly above our cost but now i think it we're losing money but it's mm -hmm. we're like whatever we're making as much as we can um, yeah which is great i know it's a, a big need for so many folks you know both in, in healthcare in restaurants that are trying to operate and everyday consumers yeah so it's it's really it's really great that all of these craft distillers were able to pivot that way and i think what's kind of crazy is like every you know a lot of the craft distillers here in Sonoma County are producing hand sanitizer and the need is is clearly there because I feel like everybody is constantly out of it yeah um, which is just kind of crazy to think that that that's the reality that's the reality yeah so yeah. it's like okay then how do we help these independent bars and restaurants, you know, that, that aren't getting stimulus money? How do we help them? Um, so right. I've, been, I've been having some ideas. I haven't settled on what it is I'm going to do yet, but I'm, 
Thank you. Well, I love that. I do love, um, you know, with obviously the relaxation of the ABC laws that have were just recently released that, you know, bars that are able to sell food are also being able to sell to go cocktails, which is great to see some of, you know, those tried and true restaurants that people love so much for their delicious food and craft cocktails are, are operating. And, and, you know, I think that that's exciting to see that. Um, and I hope that that is a, has a positive impact for them. I hope it's helping. Yeah, I really do. Um, I don't know. It's it's a big unknown, but, um, so where, if somebody did want to buy Sipsung in this climate, where could they, how can they get that? Okay. Yes. Um, I know Barn Diva has a cocktail on their list that they're doing to go, which is awesome. kind of exciting. It's delicious. Um, my heart beats, it's called, it's got beets and Indira Gin. Super yum. yum. Um, and they use a little Luxardo cherry in there with the beets. It's delicious. Um, and oh, my website. So sipsongspirits.com. I can ship. Okay. <laughs> I could ship all over California. That's exciting. Very exciting. That is a, that's a COVID, um, a keeper, I'd say. One of the, there are definitely some COVID keepers, some new laws that have changed. I'm hoping that, that some of the laws that were loosened stick around. Yeah, me too. I, the, the to-go cocktails would be kind of nice to stick around too. I think yeah. that's awesome. I mean, why I not? I could go down to Dukes and like, you know, take my cocktail to go, but I don't know if they'll, I don't know if they'll let us keep doing that, but yeah, we'll see. Um, and then, so, and then, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of places that will ship outside of California as well. So I know Shots Box has my gin and is shipping outside of California. Oh, great. Um, Ludwig's. Um, there's a few places that are out. Bitters and Bottles just got it back in, so they they have a case right now. I think they're based out of San Francisco. Is that right? Yeah, and yeah. they do delivery um, in San Francisco. So oh, you nice. Can, um, get it dropped to your porch. I think like same day delivery. In cool. Some which is really cool. Great. Um, you know, you like dream up a cocktail. You're like, I need it right now. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's I must what, make it. I must make it. Yes. What is actually one of your like go-to uh, home cocktails? Like if you were going to make yourself a cocktail, what would you make? Well, right now I'm definitely loving my spring gin, but everybody can't get that. At least not for me, they can't get it, but they, um, my distributor still has some. So I'm not sure if I can like get them to send it back to me. I need to figure yeah, it out. Probably. I would like it back. <laughs> I'm going to run out soon. And it's just like the perfect time to be drinking it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, last night I I did um I've been enjoying that pineapple syrup I made with it, the drink I told you earlier. Um, but for Indira, oh my gosh, let's see. There's so many. I love um when the blackberries come in, I'll be making brambles. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. really all about using the seasonal fruit. So right now I have kumquats off my dad's girlfriend's tree. So I've done like muddled kumquats into my mm-hmm. gin and tonic. Nice. What a fun little add. Nice little like burst of fresh citrus like that. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I really would love it if people would get away from always just using a lime. Um, you know, some ones are cool. I mean, they're a little harder to come by sometimes. Um, unless you know somebody with a tree. <laughs> that's, what um, I, that's what I do. I'm like, I know the people who have the fruit that is in season and, and they all, when, when you know people with fruit, um, they always yeah. have more than they need. And they always happy to share a little bit with you. Um, uh, there's a ring pour more tree a couple doors down. There's, mm. um, yeah. So I live in a citrus neighborhood. Cool. <laughs> so, but I would say any, like right now, strawberries are amazing. So if you get strawberries from your farmer's market, slice those up into your gin and tonic. Um, mm. so I feel like Indira is definitely a gin and tonic gin. Um, and I, and you said your favorite gin, your favorite tonic is fever tree tonic. I love fever tree, especially not the Indian, but more the fever tree light. Um, the Mediterranean's really amazing. Oh, Um, I'm a big fan of their Indian one. I haven't tried actually any of the other ones, but I love that they have various flavors, like flavor options. Um, I think it'd be so fun to even just do like a straight taste test of those ones. Oh, me too. Oh, I, and I have done, and I've tried different ones with Indira. So I'd mm-hmm. say Mediterranean and light are my two favorites. With them. Okay. They're both kind of blue. One's like a light silvery blue and the other one's more of a aqua blue. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then, 
just play around with using different seasonal fruits and then also play around with adding a little bit of bitters that you think would complement that mm. tonic and that and that fruit um, that you that you find. Nice. Yeah. Bitters is great. I love and they always add a, a nice another like flavor note to your cocktail. Um, and a little goes a long way. I loved it. My very first um, time coming to your event, the Wine Country Distillery Festival, that's what I did. I did gin and tonics. And then I made everybody, they had like these tiny little cups. I'm like, okay, now take a sip and then come back. And <laughs> so they would take a sip and they'd come, they'd come back. And then I, I like had this line because I was so nerdy about it. But then I put like one tiny little drop of bitters and then stirred it. And I was like, now try it. And, then, yeah. and everyone was like, oh, I'm blown my mind. I had... Um everybody raved about about sip song and I, I i have some girlfriends that are big gin drinkers and they were like that one was my favorite Aww, <laughs> like, okay great <laughs> makes me so happy honestly yeah. i just want to bring joy and and i'm i'm a helper i just want to help so i feel like i've been put on the planet to do something um i don't know right now what's mulling in my brain with all this covid is that it's i've got to do something about climate change and I, and so I don't know this is all this is like weird yeah there's I can imagine you know having a creative brain and and kind of being stationary so to speak it's probably <laughs> a little hectic in there <laughs> but I think you know there's lots of good that can come from all of that and you know it sounds like you already have some really great ideas coming together to for the future as Sipson continues to grow yes Yes, I uh, do. which is exciting. Thank you so much for having. Yeah, me. thank you so much, Sherry. It was so great to to have you on and learn more about you and and how how you got here. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And then we're gonna do a tasting in the next couple of weeks, which I'm excited about. And then I think I've got you on the calendar for next Friday for happy hour. Okay, next Friday. Woo! Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk soon about all of that. Okay. Thank okay, you. have a great day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.